Steve, uh, let's get your takeaways because you've noticed some pretty interesting things in these numbers too. Well, the revisions were up. I, I don't know if you remember what I said in the last hour that down. they've all been down until now, and I think we added 119,000 jobs in in the back um, uh, months, and 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 that's strong. Uh, the unemployment remaining unchanged. No addition to uh, those uh, longer-term unemployed. Um, you're just showing a lot of strength here. But you also have maintained this participation rate, which is good. I think the Fed would look at this and say, you know what? We, we, we seem to be having the workers, and they're not coming at a higher price, right? So the zero two on the wage number is going to say, you know what? We have strong employment. We have the workers to fill it. And they don't appear at the moment to be demanding a whole lot of extra money to come back to work. Um, we've seen some of the job growth where we saw it before. I think I saw a number in leisure and hospitality of up 92,000. Uh, that's a big number. We did have a 29,000 jump in uh, state government education. There's been some seasonal adjustment stuff of how many teachers were fired or hired or came back. So we kind of expected a pop there. But when you put together this blowout number right. together with the prior two upward revisions, and the and you, JOLTS report from earlier. And the JOLTS report. You get minus it, 250 on the Dow. Yeah. Well, you get minus 250 <laughs> on the Dow, but you also get a big kind of slap in the face to those Fed officials that have been saying we're seeing softening in the labor market. Mm. And that's what we want to see. So I don't know that the Fed is in a place right now where they're going to be abandoning their belief that in order to bring down inflation, you have to soften the job market. Look at the jump that we've seen in the 10-year and the two-year, too. Two-year is now at 5.14%. The 10-year is above 5.8%. Those are significant jumps that we've seen since this number hit. Uh, Sarah, the move in the market, is that an overreaction to you, or does this make complete sense, given these numbers? This headline number is going to shift the market to continue to digest, yeah. moving away from a soft landing to a hotter for longer economy, and that's going to be negative for the markets. There are a couple of silver linings, though. Labor force participation and average hourly earnings. I think quit rates are continuing to moderate. That's keeping a lid on wage inflation. But we need to dig into non-farm payrolls here and look at, first of all, what are revisions going to be? They have been basically negative most of the year, so that could be a positive. And also from the JOLTS number, are professional services continuing to grow? If that's where the growth is, I think then there could yes. be upside to wage inflation, which isn't great. But I think the JOLTS number was mostly just, just noise in this number. So this, the markets now have to wait for the next catalyst, which is going to be Q3 earnings, and see if companies are saying that the economy is still uh, you know, working their earnings and their margins and that the companies can beat and raise. Hey, Jason, what do you take away from this? You were worried for a long time uh, about the Fed's activities and what this means. At this point, it may not be the Fed that's really calling the shots. Yeah, look, my first reaction to these numbers was really just being surprised and shocked. Um, my second reaction was feeling decently good about them. Um, we're creating jobs at a clip of nearly 300,000 a month over the last three months. That is way above what you need for the normal replacement rate. But we have seen a higher participation rate. So maybe what we're seeing here is labor supply, um, not labor demand. Some evidence for that is average hourly earnings. It isn't just the low number this month, over the last three months, they've risen at a 3.4% annual rate. If that continues, that is fully consistent with inflation um, in the mid to low twos. My mm. biggest worry is that prices had been moderating, but that it wasn't going to be sustainable because you are going to continue to see very rapid nominal wage growth. Um, with that wage growth coming down, maybe what we're seeing here is labor supply increasing, jobs being strong. And you can do that um, without inflation. So meaning that the all Fed, of these people who the hadn't been working to this point, all of the people who hadn't been working to maybe their full potential because they had excess savings from COVID, maybe they've run through those savings, they're coming back into the jobs market and employers don't have to pay a much higher salary to lure them back because they need the work? You should be teaching uh, my class instead of me. Exactly right. <laughs> that, that's exactly what I was saying. Um, plus, you have a bunch of immigrants um, coming here too. In terms of the Fed, um, the 10 year has risen so much that is doing a lot of work for them. Um, I think at this point, frankly, they should have a high bar to raise rates. And given what we saw in wages here, um, I don't think there's anything here that should move them in that direction, certainly for Tyler, November. Tyler, you agree with all that? I think I'm pretty much in agreement with, with Jason. I think the story of the past, the, the dominant story of the past few months has been one of supply. And lo and behold, 
price equilibrates an imbalanced market. So we've had wage growth that has moderated by some measures, but it's still high, and that attracts a lot of workers, uh, both from unemployment and from out of the labor force. The one thing that has me scratching my head a little bit is I don't see evidence of that supply in the household survey. Uh, we did last month, at least in the first estimate, we saw a big increase in labor force participation, a big increase in those in the labor force, big decrease in those not in the labor force. I think the signs of those estimates are correct for this latest estimate, uh, but the magnitudes don't don't uh, seem to add up. But as we all know, the, the household survey is, 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 a, is a bit more volatile and prone to revision. Hey, Jason, can I go back to you for a second? I'm curious if you could give us sort of your political take on this, because I think you've had a, maybe a love-hate relation. I don't know, what, I don't know where the administra this current administration thinks of some of your views. Maybe it's a love-hate situation. But as you now start to think about what 12 months looks like from now, thinking right ahead of an election, where do you think the economy, you know, what does that economy actually look like? Yeah, you know, there were all these recession fears earlier. I think there's a good reason they've abated. Um, but, you know, recessions are a roll of the die. And it comes up one, you get a recession. It comes up two through six, um, you don't. I think that's roughly the situation we're in now. Um, maybe there's some things that make me a bit more nervous than usual, like the high long-term rates. But other things, like this labor market momentum, are, you know, somewhat reassuring. I think the biggest news, though, is that maybe, maybe um, inflation is going to actually come down. It's going to come down with more out more action by the Fed. And if that happens and it gets sustained, that would be very good news for can the I, economy. Can I just follow, follow up on one more thing year. from that? You, you mentioned that it's because of immigration, you, like illegal immigration in some extent, maybe the reason that the jobs market is... <laughs> not having to pay as much inflationary wages? Right. I mean, a lot of these asylum seekers we're seeing on the news are not, um, you know, are, are not the ones who aren't, aren't working, aren't being allowed to work. But, you know, just processing visas, all of that. Um, and, yeah, yeah, that both helps demand, um, it helps supply, and it enables you to sustain higher employment growth without driving up wage growth in the way you otherwise uh, might happen. But it makes it sustainable. It makes it good for all of us.